going to show you how to make a compound called antimony potassium tartrate. Antimony potassium tartrate is formed by the reaction of potassium bitartrate with antimony trioxide. Antimony potassium tartrate was historically used as something called an emetic. An emetic is basically something that you use on either you, being yourself, or someone else to make him puke. Now, I really have no use for this compound, and I certainly don't want to make anybody puke, because, you know, that's kind of a shitty experience. But, um, you know, it's, it's an interesting experiment, and it involves antimony, which is an element that I don't really use a lot. So, let's get started. To start out, I've weighed out 5 grams of antimony trioxide in a beaker right here. This is dry, and I got this antimony trioxide from a pottery supply store. What I have next is also 5 grams of potassium bitartrate. And where I got this is pretty simple. It's, I mean, I just got it from the supermarket. It's cream of tartar, or tartar, however you care to say it. And uh, so but those are both in 5 gram portions, and we are going to put those both into a flask. Here, I have a 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. And so what I'm going to do is just put a funnel in here, and it doesn't really matter which order you do it in. Uh, I'm just going to add the uh, potassium bitartrate first, and then I'm going to add the uh, antimony oxide. I'm just going to basically mix those two dry powders together and then we can go ahead and add the water. Okay, now what we can do is add 30 milliliters or so of distilled water to these dry powders in this 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask I have here. Now I suggest adding a stir bar for better reaction conditions. This is just to you know stir the powders around so they don't settle or anything. Okay, now what we can do is heat it up until it starts to boil, and you're sort of going to reflux this. I don't really have a reflux condenser, you know, fitted for this flask or anything. This flask isn't even ground glass, it's just a basic flask. So, anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and um, max up my hot plate and get this thing boiling, and leave it boiling for anywhere between 15 minutes and half an hour. Then we can go ahead and hot filter it I'll come back when that's done. Now we just have to hot filter it. If some of it makes it through this, the uh, the filters, just run it through again. No big deal. Now, as we can see, we have some crystals already coming out of solution. This is our product, the antimony potassium tartrate. Now, normally, just uh, cream of tartar wouldn't do this. It would come out as a you know kind of a chalky white solid, so, you know, this helps um, confirm that it is actually antimony potassium tartrate as opposed to just, you know, normal um, potassium hydrogen tartrate. So after all this filters through, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the fridge to further precipitate out the product. Something I also want to mention is it's completely normal if you don't have all the antimony trioxide disappear. Uh, it's not going to be 100% healed all the time like it is in the literature, uh, of which I will leave a uh, link in the description as always. Um, it's alright if you have some residual. Uh, I do in the filter right now. I mean, it's not, it's not going to be a huge amount. Uh, you know, most of the antimony is going to react with the um, tartrate and form your product, but, you know, yeah, just don't, don't be worried if, uh, if you have some oxide in the filter left over. So here's the final product really nice large crystals of antimony potassium tartrate. I still have to weigh it, but it looks like it's a decent yield based on the starting materials. I really hope you enjoy. 
please subscribe, like, and comment. I'll see you guys next time.